Okay, so this is part three of our uh, heads calculations. In this part, we're going to look at hemispherical heads, so the full round half sphere heads uh, that we might find on a end of a pressure part. Okay, so just a little theory first. So on page seven, we have another section which outlines hemispherical heads. And our equation uh, is listed there. And so similar to our dished heads, we have a fairly straightforward equation, a little bit co more complicated than the last one, but uh, still we only have a few things that go into that equation. Pressure, the L value, the radius, um, the strength of the material, the stress value, and uh, the W term, that weld joint reduction factor. Um, so in this meets most heads. There's also a secondary clause right below it which says if we have a very thick head that comes out of this that we have to use a different equation. So so for most heads that you would have this is going to be the equation that you'll use. We have one clause of course so an easy equation means that we have a complicated clause um, and here's what it looks like. So it's spread out over two pages. It's not super long, but it uh, is just that it spans those two pages, and that's PG 29.12. If a flanged in manhole that meets the code requirements is placed in a full hemispherical head, so hemispherical head plus a manhole, uh, the thickness of the head shall be the same as for a head dished to a segment of a sphere, see PG 29.1 and 29.5, with a dish radius equal to 8 tenths the outside diameter of the head and with the added thickness for the manhole as specified in 29.3. Okay, so here's how I read that in sort of a little more um, plain English, let's call it. If we have a manhole on a hemispherical head, all right, first thing that we're going to do, when we calculate the required thickness, we're going to use the dished head formula, not the hemispherical head formula. So even though we have a hemispherical head, we're not using the hemispherical formula, where you're going to use the dished head formula. Okay. We don't have the required L value that we're going to need. So in order to use L, we're going to multiply D by 80%, so 0.8 of D, and that's going to give us our L value that we're going to need. Um, and then... After we've calculated, because we have a manhole, we have to add the thickness. So again, either the 3 millimeters or 15%. Okay, when we calculate our hemispherical heads, we have two cases. One where we have the non-manhole version and we have the manhole version. We have a problem with most questions as presented to you using the manhole calculations. All right, and here's where the issue lies. When we have a manhole on a hemispherical head, we are asked to use the outside diameter in our calculation to find thickness. Okay. And when we have no manhole, we're asked to use the inside radius. Okay, so we have a couple of issues. First one, radius versus diameter. Okay, so that's one thing we got to keep track of. So it specifies diameter, not radius, and we need to make sure we're using the right thing. The other thing that's the bigger issue in all these questions is that the difference between inside and outside is the thickness. And guess what? We're being asked to find the thickness in these questions. So in order to be able to find the outside diameter, you need to know what is the thickness. But that's what we're trying to find. So it would become an iterative process where you guess at the thickness, check it, do your calculations, and then adjust your thickness back and forth over and over again. It would become a beast of a problem given the data that you're provided. And here's where I guess the confusion sort of stems from, or how the code is written, in my opinion. So when we have no manhole, what happens is we have a very efficient head design, actually the best we can have. 
So we require really the minimum thickness in a pressure vessel for a hemispherical head. And when we connect it to the shell, it's probably about half the thickness of the shell that it's going to connect to, or even thin. And that gives us lots of freedom with where it's positioned. Okay, And so maybe we match up the inside diameters on that, and that makes sense where we position that. So the inside diameter is a relevant value when we're calculating the thickness requirement for a hemispherical head. Okay. We also, I guess, have the option of working from the outside back in, but the calculations don't really support that as easily. So inside, find a diameter, and then work our way out to find the required thickness. When we have the manhole, we have a completely different variation of this question. So when we have a manhole, typically that's going to drive up the thickness of that hemispherical head substantially. And it may get to the point where that head is much thicker than the shell that it connects to. And in this case, if we practically built this thing, we would want that likely the outside diameter of that shell where it connects to the head to match. Okay, because that's usually how we would want the outside structure of that pressure vessel to look. So in this case, we would want to use the outside diameter of the shell and then build thickness in from there. So, so we have two different variations of these questions and it stems from the construction methods and the required thickness for both of those. Okay, so let's do a couple of example problems using hemispherical head type questions. So I have two questions here um, with different variations. So I have a hemispherical head question and I've got a hemispherical head that has a manhole. So we're going to have two different approaches for these questions and I'll work through them side by side so that you can see the difference of how we approach both. Okay, so uh, first of all, I'm going to write down some of the stuff that's going to be common to both and we'll find our stress values. So uh, what we have is going to be a pressure, um, which is going to be 4.12 MPA. We're going to have a W value, um, which again at a relatively low temperature is no matter what going to be 1. And uh, we have an S value. Okay. And so we'll go to our tables and we'll take a look at what our S value is. Um, we have a material SA285A and we have a temperature of 314 degrees Celsius. Okay, so I brought up my property tables and I can see that line number 6 uh, is SA285A, which is great. And so line 6, and I'll move down to the next page. And on the next page, I can confirm that line 6 is applicable to ASME section 1. And at my temperature of 314, I'm going to round up to 325, pick my value for line 6, and 83.8 is going to be my value. So 83.8. Okay, so 83.8, oops. MPA. Okay, so now let's go and start our calculations. So the first one, when we have just a hemispherical head, um, we're just going to use the hemispherical head equation. No manual means we can use that equation as is. And T is equal to PL over 2SW minus 0 0.2 times the pressure. Okay. So temperature or thickness is equal to 4.12 times L. And in this case, L is going to be the radius to which the head was formed measured on the concave or the inside of the head. So uh, we have our inside radius of 387 that we're going to use in that calculation. 
and then divide it by two times my stress times my W value of one minus 0 0.2 times the pressure and if I calculate that through I get a T of 9.56, and that would be in millimeters. Okay, Because this is a hemispherical head, I use that hemispherical head equation, and I don't have to do anything else because it's a blank, no manhole head. So my thickness is 9.56 millimeters. Okay, and that would be my answer. Let's compare this to if I do have a manhole. So if I have a manhole, I have essentially the same question here. Um, and I used an outside diameter of 793, which is approximately equal to two times my inside radius plus two times my thickness here. So, so we should be able to see how much thicker, relatively speaking, does a head with a manhole uh, have to be compared to a blank head, uh, no manhole. So that's going to be kind of interesting at the end as well. Okay, so when I go to find my head uh, thickness calculation, um, at the bottom after my hemispherical section, it says if we have a flanged in manhole that meets the code requirements in a hemispherical head, then we have to go and use the dished head equation we're going to use the L value that's in that equation, not as our inside radius as we did before, but it's going to be 8 tenths of the diameter. And we're going to then add thickness afterwards to account for the weakening because of the manhole. So we have a bunch of steps that we have to go through. And first one is we have to go and find our dished head equation. Okay, And so our dished head is... Uh, Equation says T is equal to 5 PL over 4.8 SW. And as I said, L is going to be equal to 0 0.8 or 8 tenths of my outside diameter. And in this case, L is going to be 0 0.8 times 793. And that's 634.4 millimeters. Okay, back to my equation. So T is going to be equal to 5 times 4.12 times 634.4 divided by 4.8 times my S, 83.8 times 1. Okay. So 5 times 4.12 times 634.4 divided by 4.8 divided by 83.8 divided by 1 gives me a thickness equal to 32.49 millimeters. So already much thicker than a hemispherical head. Okay. However, I also need to add the added thickness. So I'm going to add either three millimeters or 15%. And in this case, my 15% is going to be an additional 4.87. I'll call it for round up to 4.88. Um, millimeters, which is larger than my three millimeters. So my total is going to be equal to 32.49 plus 4.88 gives me 37.8 three seven millimeters okay. 
and that's about four times thicker than a blank head with no manhole on it. Okay, so quite a bit larger thickness. Um, and you can see how with a manhole, we may have the case where that's much larger than the shell it might connect to, whereas the blank manhole uh, or blank hemispherical head is very, very thin. Okay, the minimum thickness is essentially the best possible design that we can have in terms of a pressure vessel.